Your Coca-Cola bottler presents Claudia. Claudia, based on the famous play and novels by Rose Franken. Brought to you transcribed Monday through Friday by your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. Relax, and while you're listening, refresh yourself. Have a Coke. Now, Claudia. David, do you think we'll find Mama home? Oh, she should be. It's after six o'clock. Well, she hasn't been home all day. Every time I called up, she wasn't home. Well, she's avoiding you, and I don't blame and her. What's more, she wasn't even here when I came this morning. Mm-hmm. Well, did she know you were coming? No. Then that's not the reason. Well, Mama is not the kind of woman that runs around all day. Mama is the kind of woman Mama is and to stop deciding her life for. You're right, darling. (sighs) Why can't I learn to stop worrying about her? Because we love her. You understand everything, don't you, darling? Mm -hmm. Even what doesn't make sense. Especially what doesn't make sense, like you. (laughs) Well, here's Mama's door. Do you have your key still? I have my key still. Goodness sakes. You know, maybe I wish Mama weren't home now. Maybe it would be more fun to have her come in after us and find us here. What do you think? Hmm. How many times have we done this, you and I? Putting our key in the lock in Mama's door. It's almost as if we weren't married. Did we do this when we weren't married? Well, when we were just married. That's almost as good as being weren't married. I don't know what's good about being weren't married. Nothing, darling. Nothing. Come on, open up. Let's go in and make ourselves to home. All right. Mama? Mama, come out, come out, wherever you are. Hey, Mama. It'd be only us, your two country cousins. Mama? (laughs) She's not home. It seems not. David, where do you suppose? Wherever Mama is, whatever Mama is doing, it's perfectly all right. She is a big girl. I suppose so. After all, she is old enough to be my mother. Well, take off your hat, take off your coat, make yourself at home, Mr. Norton. In Mama's absence, I am hostess. Don't mind if I do. Oh, it's nice here, isn't it? It's like coming home. Would you like to uh, come home here? No. The only place for us to come home to is the farm. David, let's call up later. Mm -hmm. All right, we'll call. By then, Mama ought to be back, too. Well, of course, she's gone out to dinner. She couldn't. We're here. Mama does not know that we are here, remember? Oh. Well, she ought to know we're here, even without knowing. Oh. You know, she ought to have vibrations or twitches or something. Now, those are nice things to wish on your mother. (laughs) Hey, Claudia. Yeah? Did you really try to make reservations for us at eight hotels, or did you just say that for my benefit? I called not eight hotels, my man, but ten hotels. Ten? And we are unwanted. You don't say. As far as hotels are concerned, we are to remain orphans in the storm. I have half a mind to call one myself. You mean you don't trust me? Mm, I trust you, but... Well, you know, I love staying in hotels, David. Fresh sheets every night and fresh towels every morning. Maid service and no planning meals. Oh, I love hotels. Mm, hotels love you, too. Yes, they give me such a wonderful feeling with you, darling. But there is a convention. It seems to me every time we want to stay at a hotel, there is a convention. Now, if only you were a movie theater owner instead of an architect, then we could have gotten a room. Well, what's that got to do with anything? Well, it must be fun to go to a... What do you say, to convent about something, David? Convent? You think? Well, that'll do. Listen, please stop pleading up your forehead. We'll find some place to stay. Some hidden little hotel. Some place will be happy to have us. All we have to do is find a place. Yeah, I think I'll start calling now. Hey... Where'd you leave our bags, by the way? Oh? Mama! Is that you? Good heavens, Claudia. You startled me. What are you doing here? Well, we're here, and I'm here, too. And you? Mm Mm-hmm. It's 
fine time to come home, Mrs. Brown, when you have company. David, will you look at her? Her hat is askew. And where have you been, old mother of mine? Until so late. And would anybody mind telling me who invited you here? You tell her, David. Oh, why should we tell her anything? Well, that's right. Why should we? I see you have your hats and coats off. Certainly well, take do. yours off, Mom. It's all right. Go ahead. Well, thank you so yeah, much. Here, here, here. I'll help well, you. I'm not so sure I want to stay in this room with you two. Oh, you're planning to go out again? Well, I just came home. From where? Well, I don't see that I have to tell you anything. Oh. That's right, Mother. You have your secrets. Well, I intend to. Yeah? Well, where were you? Oh, you're as bad as she is. <laughs> well, no, you're worse because you should know better. You mean I should know better than to ask you where you've been? Well, in that case, Mama, I said nothing I... of the sort. Did she or didn't she, David? Well, she's a little addle-headed. Oh, definitely. Maybe we better let up on her. Hmm? Mama, do you feel addle-headed? Yes, I most definitely do. Well, then you definitely ought to tell us where you've been. You shouldn't be coming home feeling addle-headed. Well, what if we weren't here? Why, Why wouldn't might... we? And what are you doing here? We have come to take care of you, well, Mrs. Brown. you're Brown. doing a fine job. As a matter of fact, she doesn't look too badly, David, considering she's been pining away for oh, us. Oh, I thrive when I'm pining. Mama, have you been eating regularly? No. Have you been sleeping regularly? No. You see, David? She needs it. Mm -hmm. Why are you in New York? Why aren't you up at the farm taking care of your child the way a decent mother should? Because I'm following your example. My what? Well, you haven't been up to the farm recently taking care of your child the way a decent mother should. Huh, that's telling her. So we've come to New York to take care of my mother the way a decent child should. Well, you can spare yourself. Next time... As a matter of fact, we're going to take care of you all evening. Mm, at least. Are you two planning to stay in town overnight? Don't tell her, David. Well, how come? David is overworked, Mama. Mm -hmm. And seeing that he is overworked, we decided it was high time he stopped running back and forth to Eastbrook. Have they stopped running trains? Well, haven't you heard? No. Well, anyway, I decided to spare him the travel and allow him to stay in town overnight. And you had to follow behind. You couldn't let him out of your sight for one night. Of course not. A handsome man like David, why be a fool? Well, as a matter of fact, Mama, I invited her. Soft-hearted. Mm. I decided it was time that she got some hay out of her hair, so I brought her with me. If I know my daughter, she brought herself. Well, you know her. Listen, that reminds me, where were you all day? What brought you home so late? No, it's none of your business. I'm declaring my independence. I have no intention of telling you anything. All right, you don't have to tell me why you're home so late. Mama, tell me where you were all day. Come on, tell me that much. How do you know I wasn't here all day? Because you wasn't here, was you? All right, so I wasn't. Well, I was here, and I noticed you wasn't. And then when I was out, I kept calling, and you still wasn't. I am a little wuzzy. So am I. What hotel are you staying at? She's throwing us out, David. We've only just come. Now, don't you worry, Mama. Don't you worry, because we are going. We came to invite you to dinner, and you accepted. You know, I thought when my daughter got married, my whole life would change. I'd be a free woman. Huh. I would come and go as I please. No responsibilities, no troubles, no worries, no nothing. But I see I was wrong. No responsibilities, no troubles, no worries, and no nothing. Mama, it's no fun. You are going out to dinner with us. And that, I suppose, is fun. Oh, David always takes us to a very good restaurant. So extravagant. David. I don't suppose I'd mind your company too much in a very good restaurant. You see, every cloud has its silver lining. But you haven't answered my question. What hotel are you staying at? Oh, we'll worry about that later. Oh, much sir, later. You are going to worry about it. Then you have no reservations, have you? Well, Claudia says that she called up some hotels. I did, too, yes. There was a convention, Mama, of movie theater owners. Well, I thought New York was swarming. Not one hotel would have us. Poor David, he's only an architect. Well, don't you worry about me. I'll find a room. I can be very convincing Did you to say strangers. You were in town because you have to work? No, yeah, I have a meeting, but not until nine. Now, there's plenty of time for us to have dinner together first. In that case, I think you're very foolish. Well, that's a nice thing to say to David, I must say. Well, I was saying it to both of you. I think you're very foolish to stay in a hotel. Oh, I wish we could be foolish. But the hotels haven't taken us yet. So. David's going to be working all evening. You're going to be all alone. I know. At a hotel, is no fun all alone. Well, you're much better off staying with me tonight. Both of you. Why, Mama? You mean you, uh, you want us to stay here? Oh, what's so awful about that? You've stayed here before? As I remember, it was your suggestion before. So it couldn't be so awful. Why, Mama, we didn't come to New York to stay with you. Well, plans have altered to suit the situation. But suit yourself. I was only trying to be helpful. Heaven knows why I should want you to stay here. It's only for your convenience, not mine. David, 
What do you think? No, 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 darling. Now, this time we are not going to barge in on Mama. No, no, no. so different about this time than any other time. Well... Barging in on Mama was good enough before. Well, it's not good enough for us now. Why? No reason, especially. I suppose not. Finding a hotel room is better. Oh, much. Seriously, David, stay here. There's plenty of room. Now, Mrs. Brown... I think everybody wants and needs a certain amount of privacy, and I don't think you're so different from everybody. Now, this is your apartment, and Claudia and I have no right to come in on you and upset everything. You have your own plans and your own life to live. So have we. We are a mother and a father and a child. We are a complete family unit, as the books say. Mm-hmm. And as two-thirds of a family unit, David and I should stay in a hotel when we come to New York. Oh, I couldn't agree with you more. I think you should stay in a hotel, but... You see, David... You didn't really mean to invite us? Wasn't it lucky we didn't accept? Oh, well, I I wouldn't stay here anyway. This is the last place on earth, I'd say. I feel that way, too. Well, Mama Mama doesn't even have matches around for a man to light his pipe with. Oh, I don't usually have a man around to light, David. Mama and I never had any matches around for years. Did we, Mama? And I like the smell of a pipe. I always did. So do I, Mama. You know, I married David, I think, because of the smell of his pipe. Well, 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 well. It's nice to find out at last why. Well, I wouldn't mind the smell of a pipe for a change for one night. You'd, uh, you'd like us to stay? I wouldn't mind. You're not so bad. Not as bad as you pretend. Well, what about me? Oh, you're worse. Oh, you're not so bad yourself, Mrs. Brown. Then it's settled. We accept your kind invitation, There's Mama. nothing kind about it. It's only sensible. We can have dinner right here. And David can go to his meeting without rushing. And then you won't be alone all evening. See how bossy she is, David? The minute she gets a chance... Well, I'm bossy, too. We'll there. stay here, Mama, but we'll go out to dinner and to a good restaurant. Well, since when don't you like my food, my nice food? Since when? Since tonight. If we are to accept your hospitality, Mrs. Brown, you can accept ours in return. Then we won't be beholden to you. I can see there's no point in arguing. None. Well, we would better get going. We have to pick up our bags. Say, where'd you leave them, Claudia? What do you mean, leave what? The bags, of course. Where did you check them? I didn't check them. Well, you certainly didn't carry them around all day. David, do you think I'd go and spend two dollars just to leave our bags someplace? David, you're married to a much better businesswoman than that. Well, come on now. We don't have much time. Where did you leave them? Well, I left them here, of course. Here? Well, Mama wasn't here, so I just stashed them away in the hall closet. Wasn't that right? Claudia... Were you planning to stay here all the time? Was I? You were, weren't you? Were I? I might have known. I have been hoodwinked, trapped, and bamboozled. These broadcasts are adapted for radio by Manya Starr. And the entire production is supervised and directed by William Brown Maloney. Do you act as delivery boy for the family groceries? If so, you'll be grateful week in and week out for that ingenious Coca-Cola carton. It's so easy to pick up, so easy to carry, even when your arms are full of bundles. And those six bottles of Coke are greeted so enthusiastically by the family... You're always glad you remembered the refreshment department. Every day, Monday through Friday, Claudia comes to you transcribed with the best wishes of your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. So listen again tomorrow at the same time. And now this is Joe King saying au revoir. And remember, whoever you are, whatever you do, wherever you may be, when you think of refreshment, think of Coca-Cola. For Coca-Cola makes any pause the pause that refreshes. And ice-cold Coca-Cola is everywhere. Mm -hmm.